little bit. I know your grandfather, he retired from in-ring competition in the early 70s when he uh, had that accident you had talked about a little bit earlier. Um, what was it that really got him into starting up his health food business? Um, well, when he got into the accident, um, shortly after the accident, he contracted diverticulitis and it and it almost killed him. And, you know, he was going to the hospital, going to all these doctors and trying to um trying to, you know, get medicines and all that type of stuff. And none of it was working and he almost died, you know what I mean? And he started getting into like Chinese medicine and herbs and things like that and basically healed himself from it. And it, it was almost to him like a spiritual moment in his life where he had kind of this aha moment, you know, um, and I've heard him say it's kind of like he was kind of reborn again by, by finding this type of uh, lifestyle and, um, you know, learning about these natural medicines that could that could heal people and stuff like that. And, you know, little by little, he started studying. Um, he got his as his doctorate in um what do you call it? Um he was a naturopathic doctor, is what he was. Yeah. And licensed nutrition, all that type of stuff. And um, you know, he started he had the first ever health food vitamin store in middle Tennessee. At one time he had three stores. My grandmother ran one. He ran one and my aunt ran one. And then my dad got in later, but eventually by time it kind of whittled down because you had the GNCs and the vitamin shops and Walmart started selling vitamins and Kroger and gas stations even started selling some vitamins. So, you know, the little mom and pops took a hit and, um, he ran it up until the very end, really, up until about two years before he died. He had a store and they had widened the road in Brentwood and kind of forced him out. And at that time, he had got dementia and um, was just kind of going going down a little bit at that point. I mean, he wasn't mentally there to be able to run the store like he used to. And I think honestly and and. I think that's what really brought him down because he loved that store, as you know, Stanley. And um, he talked a lot about just to just to throw that in there. He he really thought very highly of you too. I mean, to be it always baffled his mind for for a young guy like you to be as interested as you were and to to show him the love and doing the Facebook, man, it, you know, it means a lot to me, him and our family. So thank you. Um, I, I do want to thank you for that. It, it does wow. mean a lot and for real. Um, yeah. But, you know, he, he just, I don't know. It just got to the point where he couldn't do it anymore. And I was in Florida and my brother overseas and my sister was, um, you know, doing her own thing. So just something we couldn't really, carry on but it, it's a cool legacy and he helped so many people throughout a lot of people don't know that about lynn like a lot of people know him as a wrestler i still have people come up to me like i tell people who are 50 years or plus if they were from tennessee if i tell them like oh you ever heard of lynn rossi they're like oh god even to this day i mean that's how popular these guys were people still remember it's just a cool legacy and um it's cool how people still remember it and you know you carrying it on like that is cool you know somebody's not even related to him or anything that's a cool thing and um anything that we can do to to kind of keep his name and and he helped so many people with the vitamins i've seen him give away hundreds of dollars of products i've seen him help so many cancer patients uh giving them ridiculous uh, percentages off or he wasn't even making anything you know um for him it was really about helping people like it wasn't about the money it really wasn't it was just about helping people I mean, he helped a lot of wrestlers, too, throughout the years as well.